My name is Tom Reed. I'm the chair of the Airport Advisory Committee. Um, in addition to being here in person, uh, people are able to live stream in, and uh, David Reed is taking care of that. Um, we have a Zoom webinar platform. I'll go over the specifics of how to join the webinar, and I will give details on how the public can give their public testimony. Um, but first, let's call the roll. Gary List. Present. Thank you. And Chuck McGill, I see right here. Jim Aldrich is excused. Uh, Ron Lee, right there. Rich Martindale. Thank you. Dave Gordon, on his way probably. Uh, Tom Ricotta, That's here. And Richard, Richard Brown, and Chase Branson. Awesome. Thank you very much. And we are not joined by Joel, my um, um, power yet. Um, okay. My favorite part is reading the fine print. Make us leadable for Brown Act and all the other things we have to follow. Make sure that we're uh, following the rules. Um, let's see here. The public can also join my webinar by computer, tablet, or smartphone by accessing the link which is listed online in the preamble language of the agenda. If you need to participate by telephone, you may dial 1 669 254 5252 and plug in webinar ID. 1619146233. This information is also available on the agenda. Please note that if you're watching via online, there may be a delay. Please participate via the audio on your phone and please achieve your computer when it is your turn to speak. If you wish to speak on a particular item, wait for that item to be called and then raise your hand to speak by tapping the raise your hand icon. Or if you are a call in front of your star nine on your cell phone or landline, if you raise your hand during non comment period, it will be lowered. The forum is now present. So let's start off with item number three, non-agenda public comment. And I know we have one guest with a presentation here, that's Kent Cassidy. And full disclosure and transparency, I've known Kent Cassidy for a very long time, and we are partners in a Stearman airplane together. You have ready, a few more. Ready already? Yes. Take it away. Let me start with the comment that I did very late coming to the game. I've been working on it for probably a couple of years now, unsuccessfully, and I'm still an advocate for trying to get this United Airlines hangar terminal, which I think the picture for everybody from the desk and some background information. Uh, the airport authority, the background, the airport authority has to move this hangar. It's been disassembled and relocated or to storage at the moment, waiting for its next site, which originally going to go to the Miramar Flying Museum, that died. Miramar was trying to shut down the museum. I explored Gillespie Field, I explored Ground Field, and then when Crown Air got the new lease of the Gibbs property, I talked to them. Would they have any interest in this anger coming to their property? And they said absolutely yes. With the full knowledge of the requirements to maintain this structure, the storage structure and designated storage cannot be thrown in the landfill. So it's got to be maintained somewhere. The airport authority would defer it off campus because their land down there is very dear and very limited. So Montgomery Field is an ideal spot. Brown Air has a site for it. And if that structure could be relocated to Montgomery Field, everybody I talk to thinks it's a great idea and it's a great benefit for Montgomery. The holdback so far to the city of San Diego has been a, but maybe you might be considered an onerous obligation to maintain the hangar in perpetuity. In perpetuity is the magic language. So my question 
is who is going to maintain the city of San Diego in perpetuity. If you look at the fault lines underneath downtown San Diego, you will see it might not be here in perpetuity. So then the other, if you think about that length of time, immediately people start thinking about the cost of doing that. And my analysis of the project is that would never, ever be a cost to the city because that structure will generate income. It's not like it's going to sit there vacant and people don't wonder what it is if they drive by. It will be an iconic, beautiful structure, historic, and it will be used for its original purpose, which is aircraft, vintage aircraft storage, flying vintage aircraft that the public can visit and rent, get, get buy rides, and so forth. Isn't it also a possible venue for public events? All kinds, yes. In addition to the rental income from aircraft storage, Bill Allen is a friend of many of people here. He has a facility out of Gillespie where they do corporate dinners, weddings, bar mitzvahs, meetings of all kinds, or major rent for the evening. So this structure could generate a lot of money for whoever the property gets on. Yes? I'm sorry, uh, we need to finish oh, okay. that question. Oh, okay, that okay. it will generate money, be seen by the public, the site, Crown Air site, is right at the end of John Day Montgomery, and the John Day Montgomery gets the parking lot on the right-hand side, that's the site for this. So, you have any questions? Yeah, I have a number of questions. Um, in the event, I'm in the events business, so one of the things I understand is what it takes to sell uh, events and then to put them on. And it's not, and in, uh, it's a significant investment in time and expertise and money to be able to market a venue and uh, turn a profit. Uh, there's a number of also questions that just come to mind off the top. One is who would be responsible for uh, selling events and activities that are going to go on that are revenue producing and designed to, to cover the cost of the Whatever rent, you know, is it gonna is it gonna generate rent for that space that would have been generated if it was otherwise leased? Is it um, who's gonna maintain the uh, the event schedule? Who's gonna manage it? Who's gonna sell it? Is it been given any thought to to that? Yes, there are event planners whose business is corporations or people contact these organizations and find out what they have available and when, and then they make the deal yep. with those kinds of companies who do that professionally. And also, can, isn't, I'd like to just get have Ray um, jump in on this too. Yeah, we need to turn on it. will be a hangar on our facility, just like any other hangar. So oh, okay. if it's being used for aircraft storage, we would lease it to the person storing the airplane. If we had something we wanted to do with that, and we were allowed to, based on the parameters of the event, we would have one price. We're, we're getting a permit to be able to do events in our, one of our new hangars. Yeah, we did a few tandem jump activities. Yeah, anyway. like we're, we're getting an occupancy permit for that, and um, we would do something similar as this building is being constructed to get that. We'll probably have an event coordinator on staff if that's all we do. Once we have this place, that's part of our business. Great. Well, the only other question I had is, and it has to do with what the city of San Diego expresses a concern that is, in perpetuity, there's a significant expense for maintaining it. Is there any money that comes along with the building uh, for, for its maintenance or its movement or its reconstruction to begin with? And, and, and how can we assure the city that they'll never spend a nickel maintaining it, which is, it seems to be what you say, their concern? Is there some kind of fund or something that is kind of self generating that, will, that, that makes sure that the city doesn't ever have to worry about? Because I assume that they aren't worried about having any cost. Associated with maintaining it, they'll be much more willing to see it happen. Good point. I agree. And the when that building goes on a leasehold from the airport, 
the city doesn't, whether that building or any of these mayor, the city doesn't maintain it. The city has no cost of take this building. The leaseholder has that obligation. So say at the end of 40 years, Crown Air is gone, say, and Crown Air, et cetera, may step up. But you know, an RFP is put out. So the person interested in that leasehold agreed one of the one of the things that's part of that leasehold obligation of uh, pay the ground rent that you do X and the person getting the lease has the obligation to maintain structure on that property. Do you have any communications from the city that identify exactly what your journey because what you what you're saying makes total sense and it really does mean that the city isn't responsible for maintaining that. But if they're if they're negative on this idea now, I'd really love to know the exact reasons they articulate in writing as to why they aren't able to see this happen. That would I've been looking for that and maybe you can help me. Can you get that in writing from the city? Yeah. Um, this is a topic that we've gone on about, but I am a supporter of this building. It's a beautiful antique building. I think there's a layer of bureaucratic problems with it because the city can't give a building to, you can't, they just can't give something away. Um, and and so they have, they have that issue. They also have the maintenance issue, which I think can be resolved better. I also think that if you look hard enough, you could probably find federal funding that would say, hey, we'll take care of this. I mean, they're giving away money out right now. Well, the airport authority has the budget in their terminal one expansion to disassemble, move, and reassemble that building. So, I don't cost you. How about this? What if we made a motion to put this on the agenda for it next time, or we made a motion to for the staff to review the documents? Are you just added? You can make no motion to it. So, say again, please. You can't make a motion on it because it's not an agenda item. Well, I mean, I mean, add it to the yeah, agenda. For no, yeah, just add it to the agenda next month. Do do we have time? It's so, Kent, isn't there a, a kind of time is of the essence component of this a bit? Yes. And their original conversation with the airport authority was they had until the end of 25, which is the target date, the first phase of the general one expansion to be completed. Then with the second phase that will take until 2010 27. The airport authorities thought said if I was told by a member up in the ranks in the airport authority that we could probably get an extension from the end of 25 to the end of 27 to complete the project. But if the right now the engineering is being done, I don't think be reassembled as kind of the engineered components of the building codes and so forth. So that is being done. So there is a conversation that hey, it's too late, we can't do it. It's going down another track. And I say thank you for sharing. And I'm still optimistic that it may be I mean, I think, yeah, I think, I think we as a committee should take this up. I think it's a, it's just a, such a phenomenal opportunity to do something really, really cool at, at Montgomery. That is, I mean, Ray, no disrespect to the beautiful new building, but holy crap, wouldn't it be awesome to have an, a, a beautiful vintage building on, on premise as well? I think it would by far see anything that's been done at this airport today, by far. Yeah, so the number of the hills in that building and the light that it I just I get really excited about it. I just I think it's a really cool opportunity. So let's I'm gonna make a motion that we submit this information to the city staff for reconsideration and we request a report. You can't case. make a motion, it's a non-agenda item. He is correct. He is correct, that's right. So we'll look for next okay, week. so we will put this on the agenda for next time so that we can schedule a motion for it. And in the meantime, we will submit the information to the city staff for reconsideration. Okay, one final comment is a picture I've given you is the back of the building and the and, the, and one side. So the front of the building is all glass. It's like it. that side, all glass. So yeah, we have that side that faces John and Dave. You can see just right. all the windows okay. and the keep it all. Yes. Where, where is the where is the building physically right now? Oh, no. 
So thank you, Ken, very much. We're going to get this on the agenda for next time. All right, so we are uh, moving into the next item. Yeah, we're moving into the next item. Yeah, we're moving into the next item. Yeah, we're moving into Okay. Oh, we might still have public comment. From no one on the There's nobody else on the line. So, non agenda public comments has been completed. Thank you very much, Ken. Um, good stuff. Um, we need you to approve the minutes from July 12, 2023. Has anybody uh, got any corrections or do we have a motion to approve the minutes as the Second, okay. Okay, moved by Chuck and seconded by uh, Ruth, the Rick Martin. Uh, all in favor? All opposed? All abstentions? Okay, count. Okay, we're going to go to the next item. Um, Chuck, you're going to read the minutes. So, just a little background on Tom Reed. This is my first real meeting since I had brain surgery. So, I'm just a little bit like still in the anesthesia. That's why. <laughs> That's why I have a funny hair. Okay, so we have approved uh, the minutes. We are moving along now to uh, new business. Uh, and uh, new business is that we are going to receive a file report regarding payment repairs to Flat Top, Marigold West, Taxi to Bravo, and Taxi to Charlotte. Um, so, are we going to get that report before we? Yes, yes. Okay, go okay. back. Take the one that came in the back. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Um, we have to make money for that. Um, no, Mr. Chair, what I can do is, uh, uh, well, first of all, thank you for being here after the surgery. I'm glad you're doing better. And uh, this item, actually, David Reed, the program's uh, coordinator for projects, is going to be presenting on as to what's going on at the airport. And uh, David, please go ahead. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as everyone's well aware, we've been discussing prayers for Flat Top Marigold West along with the issues that tax away Charlie and Bravo in between the runways. And we've got a plan together to address that. Um, first off with some background, you can see the image up there, staff is inspected. Uh, the current status of the, the asphalt there at Flat Top Marginal West, as you can see, it's in very poor repair. Uh, these areas will need to have the asphalt milled up, grind, grind it up, and then the asphalt overlay applied. Um, so far for the project, we've worked with Ramona Paving, who is an as needed contractor for the city of San Diego. Um, we're currently processing new, a new contract. I'll touch on that. Um, the scope of work is what we received for doing the overlay in the flat top marigold area, along with seal coating and other items, is $270,000 and $270,521.19 with just under a little uh, $30,000 for some additional contingencies and field orders. So when we get out to the project and put shovels on the ground if we find any issues we can have extra funds to address those bringing the total cost to about three hundred thousand dollars here you'll see the areas in question for flat top marital west of what we're looking to do the areas in blue are where the asphalt will be grinded up and then overlay applied um, they were the pictures before you saw where the asphalt was in very poor condition uh, we be doing some slight patchwork uh, seal coating and crack sealing in the red area as that pavement is in fairly good condition. Um, it's not as heavily trafficked and, and it just has a bit of vegetation coming through it. Uh, so we'll remove about four inches of asphalt, about 4,800 4, square feet, um, and then roll the subgrade, not completely compact, um, but we'll roll it uh, and lay in about four and three quarters of asphalt uh, to address the issue in the seal coat whole area. Then to the problematic areas where everyone goes and everyone's very uh, concerned about taxiway Bravos and Charlie in between the markings. Mm -hmm. um, those areas each are about 10,000 square feet. Um, we have the contractor out there to, to look at them and see what can be done because they are in pretty poor condition without a complete um, basically reconstruction. Uh, what we're gonna try and do is do some patchwork in there in the very problematic areas where there, there's potholing a significant deterioration to create a more smoother surface because the seal coat would do nothing to those larger areas. So we'll patchwork where we can and then apply a seal coat to that whole area to make sure no more loose aggregate comes up and causes any damage to anyone else's aircraft. And this will happen in both sections as needed at each area. 
So our next step, we're working with ENCP, as I, I said, they're working to put together a new as needed contract. This is one of, gonna be one of the first items on that new contract. We're also working to process the mayoral action simultaneously with them so we can try and fast track this as quick as quickly as possible. Uh, we have just about everything we need to set up the purchase order. Um, there's just a few little items um, that need to be tidied up. So we kind of have that in place. And after that, it's a, just a matter of scheduling the work, notifying all the tenants in those areas and notifying all the users uh, of when we plan to actually have the work take place and close off certain sections of the airport. And with that, I'll turn it over to questions. How long do you think that it'll take to do the very goal that about today? So for the whole project, they've asked for 20 working days. That's not bad. No, not bad at all. And I, I would imagine that they'll get it done before then, but I think they typically ask for more just in case, as within the construction and project. And you'll be able to give the tenants adequate notice that they absolutely for twenty days. Absolutely, okay. that that's something we're definitely considering. Yeah. So is any one hangar is going to be out of, out of access for twenty days, or is that just the whole project's twenty days? The whole project would be twenty days, is what yeah, they're requesting. How much any one hangar is going to? Be? Not right now. Um, once we get into further details and get everything executed, we can ask for a schedule of work of, of when they would like to do everything. Most likely, um, what I'm anticipating from them is they would like to do everything in that area at once as, term, as far as grinding and overlaying. They probably like to grind both sections at once, so they have all the equipment out there probably one one or two days, and then overlay one or two days, and then reapply markings. Yeah, as soon as it's flat. <clears throat> Usable, we need to go back in. Say, we, we the yeah. But we will give everyone plenty of advance notice. We'll try to make as many accommodations as we can if someone needs to pull their aircraft out uh, for to have it available at that time somewhere else. We will work to, to see what we can do to accommodate that with alternative parking spots. What about what about trading what's the spot out on the tarmac down here? For, where we have uh, tie downs? Yeah. I think that's something we can we can discuss. That decision would ultimately be up to the Torque and what's available. Thank you. Yeah, it's about only would be on our first come, first serve basis. Yes. So so funding down. source. Funding source, this is all coming from our funds, from the enterprise fund. There's no FAA funds in this. Um, one being because it's kind of apron space, they tend not to pay for that because we have so many other meet, other needs right now. And on top of that, with the expediency of which the this project needs to be taken care of because of the pavement conditions, it, it's just much easier and much faster for us to use our funds the next Just curious. Anybody else have a question? What's the expected uh, lifespan of the reconstructed taxiways after this work would be completed? It, it's hard to say, but this is a band aid. So I, I wouldn't expect much over five years. Um, and, and the reason we're taking that approach is because we eventually want FAA funds to reconstruct. Um, in November, we're going to be holding our um, ACIP meeting for the FAA and looking at when we can uh, schedule the runway rehabilitation for, I'm, I'm blanking right now, our smaller runway, our shorter runway. 2 8 left, right? Okay. I was going to play. 2 8 left. Yeah, 2 8 left. Um, seeing when we can schedule that rehabilitation project, and then we want to grab these two sections of taxiway as part of that and have that fully reconstructed. So we're hoping for at least five years, but this is simple simple patchwork and seal coating to, to preserve it for now, prevent further damage to any other aircraft. It's like off road again, so. <laughs> so you got to do what you got to do, but does the patchwork then postpone the eventual? Rebuilding of the runways, we would like to see that. No, that's why we did this approach. Um, if we were to do serious rehabilitation work, there's restrictions on what the FAA would pay for. So, if we really did a great deal of grinding and milling like we're doing in the other areas, the FAA would not likely pay for that, not for another five to 10 years. Um, I believe that's correct. Don't, don't quote me on the FAA's timeline. I'd have to look it up. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you very much, David. Do you have any other informational items for the agenda? The only comment that I, that I want to add to this is uh, it is a repair. I mean, those areas have uh, not been taken care of for a long time. And uh, we heard from this group that it was an issue. We went out, we got the vendors out, we identified how to fix the situation now. 
We don't want to forego the funding. Uh, we're going to be making it uh, safer for aircraft to transverse through the airfield. And that's the goal until such time that we can get uh, FAA funded. But that's not to say that there's other areas of the airport that uh, need uh, assistance. We just have to plan it out and base it up on, on what funding available we have at the, at the time. And, and just to clarify, the, the hangar rows we anticipate with this work, the life of that could be five to 10 years. Is it it's lighter traffic there? Uh, okay, so no more in, uh, in British lines. We are now on staff report. Director Rubio? Thank, Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I wanted to start by by mentioning a few changes in staff that we have had. And uh, I would like to start by asking uh, uh, Ms. Jennifer Beers to send that. Uh, Jennifer is uh, the new program manager. She is taking over Enza, Enza spot. Uh, you may remember Enza. So she's working with the properties uh, team. Uh, she'll be providing her report in a, in a, in a few moments after I, I end up talking about this, but uh, may, maybe Jennifer, you wanna say a few things about yourself? Sure. Hey everybody, I'm Jennifer Beers. Um, as Jorge said, I'm the new program manager. I'm excited to join the team. Um, just a little bit of background, I come to the city with um, almost 20 years of experience in commercial real estate. Um, the public and private sides, and I'm excited to be part of the team and being with the airlines. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you, Jennifer. Now, um, I wanted to mention a few promotions that we've had. Uh, uh, let's start with uh, Jerry Magner in the, in the back. Jerry, if you, I think people know you, but um, he, is, uh, a, he is right now a senior airport operations assistant. Uh, and uh, he was uh, recently offered the position of senior airport operations assistant. Uh, taking the position that uh, Jason used to occupy here at Montgomery Games. Uh, uh, his effective date is going to be early next month. Uh, but uh, he just got the, the news today. So, congratulations again, Jerry, for our job well done. Um, the next one is um, uh, Tisha Newell. Uh, Tisha, if you don't mind setting up. <laughs> um, Tisha got uh, promoted to an admin ADA 1, uh, and she will be working with. Uh, uh, the finance team uh, within, within our airports and assisting in grant paperwork and anything else uh, finance uh, related. And uh, she's very helpful, thank you. Um, with that being said, um, we are hiring for uh, a lot of positions with our team. Most of them happen to be in the airport operations uh, assistant uh, um, uh, category. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, six vacancies. Um, three of them were recently approved by city council. So those are new positions in order to provide more coverage at both airports um, in case of emergencies, in case anything happens. And uh, we are looking to post uh, those positions this Friday. So uh, look for those up on your goal if you're interested or you know anybody who may be interested in working with the city, we are looking to do that. And on top of that, tomorrow we are, um, uh, we are actually going to make an offer for a program, uh, no, 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 make interview, uh, conduct interviews for a program coordinator that will be helping David on all of those projects that we have scheduled for the next uh, few years at both airports. Our, we have a really strong capital improvement uh, program for the next uh, five years and uh, many projects uh, down the pipe. So I, I, he really needs help and we're gonna be providing that uh, to him. And that's also a position that was recently approved by uh, city council. So that's the staff um, the staffing update. Uh, now I, I wanted to just uh, touch on a couple of things, and then we'll go to the rest of the staff. But um, uh, the 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 team will be participating in the nine two one two three community celebration. That's the zip code for those of uh, you who don't know our zip code. That's nine two one two three. It is only once uh, a century that uh, the zip code lines up with the date, and. Uh, <laughs> There will be a celebration, not on the 21st, but on the 16th of this month, this Saturday, um, at the Sarah Mesa Recreation Center. And uh, we will have a, a table there and be interacting with the community. So if any FPOs, any businesses want to come out and join our table, feel free to do so. We're going to be there to represent here. It's also the normal town building. Ah, there you go. It's a dual celebration. Um, uh, the other item that I wanted to mention is um, the 
the city has uh, this uh, climate action plan. Um, so anybody who leases uh, uh, buildings from us, uh, anybody who leases land from us, will be getting a notification this week about uh, the, the the city trying to basically be more sustainable and potential changes to new leaseholders effective January 1st of 2024. I know at the moment I probably sparked a lot of questions in your head, but what I would ask is that uh, please hold your questions, attend the webinar. It's going to be held via Zoom. There will be two opportunities. So if you miss one day, you can attend the other day and uh, be ready to provide a comment and uh, and maybe ask questions. Then uh, you will be getting the notice this week. So I, you will be able to reference the materials that uh, will be necessary for you to do that this way. I just wanted to let you know that that's something that's happening all throughout the city. It's not only airport specific, but the whole city is going through that process. Um, so regarding unleaded fuel, as you know, that is um, one of our top projects and uh, we're trying to um, build a permanent uh, fuel tank out here on our main ramp. And that process uh, is taking a little longer than what we would have liked. So at the moment, we are actually in communication with our FPOs. We're in communication with a vendor. There is a new product that came out. It's a 1,000 gallon uh, fuel bowser, basically a, a towable fuel truck, but it's, it's a new product. It, it's not out there. Um, and we're trying to get our, our hands on it. And what that would allow us to do is to um, work with an FPO, have a, 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 some sort of like a rental agreement with them so that they will be able to take over the, the Bowser that the city would own, and they will be able to distribute unleaded fuel uh, to the rest of uh, the lessees and the users at the airport. So we're trying to be as expeditious as we can on that. We're going through the procurement process right now. Um, hopefully I'll provide a, a, a more in-depth uh, or, or further advanced uh, update uh, at the next meeting, but that, that is in the works. And uh, uh, again, it's, it's something that we take seriously and we're trying to make sure that uh, we move forward on. Okay. Yes. Uh, is that going to be all 94 or GAMI? Um, GAMI is, doesn't have a, a, a distribution uh, set up at the moment. So it can be used for anything, but initially I think it may be your life. This, um, most of your life. Uh, as soon as a, a more ubiquitous formula is out there, that paint will be switched over just a matter of right. okay. So mm -hmm. as soon as whatever is first available, we'll hit that paint. And after, as soon as the more common, they hopefully can. You know, the most important thing is that, like everyone was able to say, we have some of the people there, so we can't use it. Yeah. Yeah, so good news in that regard. Uh, I, I hope to have, a, again, a more advanced uh, report next month, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make a uh, later fuel available at uh, Montgomery Gibbs uh, sooner than later. Um, they, uh, I don't know if you've been watching uh, TV, or uh, but uh, over the last uh, few weeks, I've had a few opportunities to speak about uh, the aviation industry, to speak about uh, uh, the, the industry, our airports, at a couple of forums. Um, on August 25th, uh, uh, I had the opportunity to go live on Fox 5 to talk about uh, National Aviation Week and what it meant here in San Diego. So I had a couple of uh, on air times so I'd like to say that basically to talk about on air stuff. Uh, so that was uh, that was uh, well received and uh, and I was able to talk about uh, uh, what we do here at, at our airports. Additionally, just last night, um, I was a speaker at a Cal State LA airport law class uh, to incentivize and motivate airport uh, management, uh, um, you know, the, the future workforce to, to join aviation, to do the best that they can, but also to let them know that we have five openings coming up on Friday. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Roy, was that recorded too? Yeah. Uh, not the one from last night. Okay, but the one that one of Box Five. Can you uh, send I think, a link to that? Yes, I, I think that's on YouTube. So, yeah. sure. And um, um, on the first week in October, I'll be attending the, the National Airport Economic Development Conference. Uh, they want to know a little bit about what we're doing at uh, Brownfield to change that airport. And uh, I'll be there speaking with uh, a gentleman who was economic development. Uh, um, uh, 
director for Kansas City International, <laughs> International Airport, and we'll be talking about projects and what it takes to basically take projects forward. So that's, uh, I'm looking forward to that. And there's a couple of airports, as you may imagine, that, that are interested in attending those sessions. Now, <clears throat> uh, this is, the, I think, the most important news uh, um, today, uh, as far as excitement. Therefore, the Trimotor uh, is scheduled to come back to uh, Montgomery Gibbs on October 9th. It will be here until the 16th. We're working on all the permanent approval. I'm not pretty sure it's going to go through. Uh, so my understanding is that it's been at least uh, eight years since they have been here, and they will be offering rides from Friday through Sunday. And uh, the, the tickets are actually not, um, they're, they're fairly reasonable. Uh, they're talking about uh, $85 uh, per uh, person to, you know, for adults and, and 65 for children, children under 17. So that's uh, pretty cool. And um, and uh, with that, that's my staff report. If you have any questions for me, otherwise I'll turn it forward to, to the, my team members. Okay. Uh, David, do we have any uh, on uh, public comment on uh, mine? Let's see here. We do not. Do we have any public comment? Yes, sir. What were the dates again? You said for the final October the 9th or the 16th. Okay. Really good. Really cool. Airplane to ride it. I got it right in at Oshkosh. Yeah. Okay. Right. A little bit of a trip. Oh, where is this? It's going to be right up here. We're, we're, we're working out the details, but uh, at least we have the dates for now. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be somewhere accessible and the public will be able to. That'll be something. Yeah, sorry. Three inches. Three inches. Okay. So with that being said, uh, uh, Ms. Jennifer Bears, please uh, go ahead with your report. All right. So I have some updates on current major projects for everyone. Um, at Brownfield, um, staff is working with San Diego Air Park on a proposed change of use and some of the leases from light industrial to industrial and research services. That project continues to move forward. Um, the city obtained a judgment against the lease for possession and is reviewing a rate of possession for the property. Um, airport management is working with the CAF on this process. Um, moving on to Montgomery Gibbs, uh, we have a draft lease that's been approved by the San Diego Community College District, and all the leases have been resolved. Um, we are processing the lease for council approval. Uh, the lease term shall be three years, including two options to extend the term. Uh, of the lease for two additional three year periods. Um, let's see, the draft lease has been sent to Tenant Sorby for um, Spider Snyder, um, is another item, and that's in discussions. Um, Corporate Helicopters is working with DSD to process plans for the proposed development project. Um, they are also finalizing NEPA documents to submit to the FAA. They're requesting changes that will affect the leasehold for Executive Air Park. Um, and we're working with EA and corporate helicopters to amend their leases and schedule a meeting to review the project status. Uh, Hangar electrical work for lot 8A is continuing. Um, there are also currently three tie downs available at City's lot 8A that will be used as temporary parking for aircraft displaced for the electrical work within their hangars. And um, staff is negotiating an MOU with Parks and Rex uh, to lease a vacant parking lot at 9485 Drive. This project will generate over $10,000 per month in rent. Um, at the Montgomery Gibbs Business Park, we have a couple of items. Staff is working with our purchasing contracting group to release the RFP for services of the property management company. Um, staff is considering granting a right of entry to AT&T to provide internet access to the retail and office building customers. And we're negotiating through our leases for existing office tenants. Um, the retail center, we are working on a refurbishment project, um, negotiating leases for existing customers for council approval. Those lease terms range from two to five years with options renewed for three to five years past our initial lease terms. And the timeline for city approval and full execution of the lease is by year end. And that's all I have. Thank you. Question real quick for San Diego Air Park, the change in their lease because there's less demand for retail, does that affect their the cost of their lease to the city in any way? Or are they just asking for permission to, to entertain other types of industry and business? I, I, sure, yeah. I, I think I can I think like that. Um, so what they're, they're talking is, uh, if you look at the monument sign on the corner of Heritage and, uh, and uh, Otay 
what's it called? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all, all the way to where uh, the entrance to the terminal is, um, that's here that they're looking to uh, redo. It doesn't change the, the, the revenue that we will be getting, but uh, since uh, the 905 was built, uh, obviously there's less traffic uh, traveling from the airport, so less vehicles, so they're reconsidering, repurposing a use to something that will make the money and in return, like, we will continue to see the revenue that we we're expecting anyway. Do you have any idea what it is they want to base that retail with? Um, it seems to be that it, it, it's basically uh, additional storage, additional warehousing, uh, something similar as to what they're looking to do with uh, with the vehicle lots on the north side. Okay, thank you. Yeah, quick question: Do you have a time limit on the north side tenants, or is that kind of still in the courts? <laughs> um, I wish I had a more accurate uh, uh, response for you. What I can tell you is that at this moment, we are having to uh, request uh, another read that is specific to each of the sub -leases, and then we'll be working with the city attorney's office to, to move that forward. But at least we have the, the judgment um, uh, that basically says that they're not to be occupying the space because they don't have rights to it. And uh, we're hoping probably within the next few months to be done with it. After you have uh, out one, you anticipate after like they start moving out. It's it's hard to tell really. What we need to do is uh, after uh, uh, they they leave, we would have to evaluate and 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 take a look at the condition of hopefully nothing is remaining, but <laughs> maybe what is remaining, and uh, and go through the environmental processes and figure out what needs to happen. Um, Moving right along as staff report. Yes. Um, so uh, uh, Charlie Rodman, he's actually attending the California, he's a board member of the Association of California Airports. So he is in Reno uh, today, but uh, he um, left uh, his report in charge of the uh, soon to be promoted uh, uh, senior airport operations uh, assistant, Jerry Wagner. So, Jerry, please go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Just a couple of key points that happened uh, this last month. There was over 29,000 aircraft operations at the airport last month. Um, we have a project Thursday and Friday putting some FOD maps um, over at uh, Marshall 3 there on, on Juliet, kind of mitigate that, that FOD issue that's happened. And um, we have the Fairmore Air Show coming up. So there's going to be some notes coming out on uh, the 21st and 25th. And those are going to be periodic two hours at a time, three hours at a time. Four hours, but we have a we'll send that out and email everybody also. And then, um, you have any questions, Carl? We'll be back on Monday, pretty straightforward. So, the new writer shows the 21st, 21st to the 25th, yeah. yeah. The, the 22nd, the 21st, we're using as uh, right. training, yeah. yeah. 21st yeah. of the training, and then, and then the air show will be the 22nd. So, on uh, schedule, you return flight home from somewhere on that day, yeah. right? So, I don't know if you file, right? So, we sent out last year. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Now, let's go with uh, Andy Schwartz. Uh, good, manager good, for good afternoon. Um, I just want to get back to uh, staffing. Um, we also, Chad Brownfield, decided to put an operator. Um, that position has been banked for about over, over a year, so we just filled that position as well. Um, and then I want to touch on some staffing issues at the tower. They are um, normally staffed now, so we did have some um, amended hours that were happening there. Those have all been canceled, so we're back to regular uh, standard hours, which are eight to eight, 12 hours for the day. Um, we have an RSAT meeting scheduled for September 27th. That'll be at the uh, Brownfield Conference Room. That'll be from one to three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, the FAA is working on uh, the parking lot over at the tower. We've been working on that for some time now, but now that we've got into the excavating phase of that, so those are doing some work, removing asphalt and bringing in dirt and so on. So um, with that being said, we're going to have gate four within the next week or so permanently open, so the trucks come and run gate four. So uh, access to that area will be restricted only to FAA, you know, UA and tenants in that area. Um, as far as operations, we are down. Um, we had 8,000 operations last month. So, trend since COVID has been the operation to continue to go down. Uh, that's all I have. Does anybody have any questions? 
public comment for that? Or... No? Nope. Thank you. And I thought those uh, are separate ones. I mean, yes, but we're at the uh, We are now on item 70 here, traffic control tower report, but Joel has uh, not joined us. They are still very busy and slightly understaffed. I do know that that tower has some new guys, um, and they seem to be extremely well trained and they're just functioning great. Yeah, I, I understand that a lot of the new guys. New people, new people. Thank you. Um, I think a lot of them come from other airports, so they already have some skills. And that seems to be the burden of training. Yeah, and, and for those that don't know, this is a very complex airport. So you have biplanes, you have your jets, you have everything in between, and there are two runways, and there's a lot. There's four people here, and it's it's one of the most complicated business airports in the world. So I just want to tip my hat to the tower because they always get it done. So uh, with that, we are on 7C. Other reports? Do we have any other reports? Um, there are some in the packet. Do you have any questions? No. Nope. Uh, is there any public comment on the other reports? None of that. Okay. So uh, are there any committee comments before we adjourn? Uh, one thing. Um, we're doing, my company's doing a drone light show at the U.S. has made the first one ever. This one's the second one downtown. It's going to be September 20th at 8.15 p.m. So if you're down by the Fish Market Restaurant or by the USS Midway, come on down. You'll see 100 drones in the air at one time. Uh, and we'll, uh, some folks are going to be holding them in the Midway. But it's the first one ever. It's a private event. Yeah, private event. Yeah. Stay out of parking lot. All right, thank you very much. And with that, we are at item number nine, which is adjournment. I'm going to make the gap on that. Here, here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to try to get the same thing,